Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, we are going to talk about the expressiveness of photo editing. That's a really important part of understanding how and why you edit photos in a certain way and the variety you get from these different kinds of editing. So let's get started with that. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, I will give you this photo as a raw file so you can download it directly from my website, no login required. You can experiment with that and then you can post your results in my Facebook group as a comment under the post of this tutorial. I will link both of that in the video description below that video. And another bonus, on Friday I will post my first video where I talk about the photo projects and the planning for that that I am doing this year, the ideas that go into that, the thought process, the artistic decision. So that's going to be really interesting. And of course, then the next tutorial is going to be on Saturday. Okay, let's get started here with this video. So this is actually the original photo unedited just out of the camera. And it's not a special photo because I didn't want this to distract from what I'm talking about because otherwise you would say, yeah, well, but it's a good photo. So of course the editing steps looks good. Here's just this kind of branch with some, I think, blossoms on them, these kind of roots with the blossoms. It looks nice, but it's nothing special. And when you look at the photo unedited, you can see how because you have the brown from these flowers on there and then the brown in the grass and the brown in the trees behind that, everything is melting together. There is not much separation. It's very even also from the lighting, from everything there is no thing that really grabs your attention and separates out the elements. And this is a huge part of editing is that you make clearer to the viewer what you actually want to show. It doesn't have to be in the photo out of the camera, but it has to be in the editing afterwards. Of course, you can also try to do it in the camera if you're good enough with that, but editing adds this huge possibility. So let's look at different versions here. Here's the first version that I have created. And you can see this is rather reduced from the colors. Still, everything is very brown, even with the background, but now the colors are nicer. So that's a big difference. And you can see that the background has more of kind of a grayish touch in there. So you still have a bit more separation of the foreground and the background. But at the same time, what you can see is because there is no more of that green in here is that a lot of the noise, as I would call it, is removed from there. So noise is basically more information that you need, information that distracts from what you actually want to show. That is noise. It doesn't mean it's bad in any way. It's just meaning for the concept you have, for the idea you have, this information is not good. So when you edit a photo, think about it like a movie director, when you film different scenes and then afterwards when you cut the movie, you remove some scenes or you cut out different parts of scenes because they are not adding to the story. They have information in there that doesn't really help the film or the pacing or the action in there. So you want to keep that out and just keep in the best parts that you actually want to show. And of course, with photography, we only have one picture, but still there's a whole universe of storytelling in there. And this is just the first version. Let's go to the second version here, which is this one. And you can see how different that is from the other version. It feels a lot denser. It feels a lot meatier. So this, because the colors are so light, it also it's brighter in the background. It feels a little bit floatier, a little bit lighter. And this here feels a lot more kind of wet, even meatier. It has more substance, right? At the same time, I feel in this edit, it is sinking a little bit into the background because the colors of the plant in the foreground, these flowers is very similar in the colors, in the brightness, in the saturation to the ground that we have behind here with the grass. There's a little bit of green also in here. So personally, I would enjoy this more, but 
Editing is a personal choice. So you do whatever you feel like is good. And then of course, also ask your friends or ask other people around you, ask people online what they think about it to get feedback. Also, always take that feedback with a grain of salt. So just um, think about it, ponder about it and think what kind of pieces of that feedback do you want to pick up or not pick up, right? And don't be ever angry about anything that is sad because people don't know you. They don't know your intention. So if they say something wrong, probably they just don't understand you or maybe they're having a bad day, right? So that's also okay. Just ignore that. Let's go here to the next piece. So you can see here, very different. And this is another thing you can do with photographs is removing a lot of the information by making it a lot darker, just having some parts peek out and then the rest is kind of vanishing into darkness into the background. You can see through that it can become rather focused. It can become rather mysterious in that case because we have this forest here. Think a little bit about the scene. Think a, bit, a little bit about the story. So we have these muted dark colors in here right now. It feels a little bit like a witch story, kind of a ghost story, ghost film, a little bit mysterious from that scene. So that could be really interesting to think about that. Also this kind of blue you have back there. So we have kind of a change in the time of day, which is also interesting, which you can do, for example, with the white balance, making it warmer, making it colder, you can introduce different kind of light situations, no matter what has happened when you took the actual photos. You can see here, this is through the daytime with an overcast and suddenly this looks like more kind of evening, very different, right? Let's go into the next one here. And you can see again, this is very strong from the contrast. We have some dark areas in there that are intensely dark, but then also there's a lot of brightness coming from the background. So when you compare these two, you can see that this has a very, very different expression to it, right? You can also see here, of course, with this dark one, we have a very strong vignette around the outside, while here we don't really have one. And another thing, when you look at these two, when you compare them directly, you can see how the vignette is bringing the attention to the center and how this without a vignette is moving the attention also to the outside. So the picture becomes wider, but it also stretches outside. This is an important concept also for images that can go beyond the border of the image, if you know what I mean. So uh, for example, if you have an image, you hang it on your wall and the image is very much going from the editing to the outsides. The image is basically flowing out into the room, connecting and interacting with the room. And it has a different way to, to have a presence as a picture rather than when it is very focused on its own, right? And by the way, you often see this, for example, with modern art, because for example, modern art often does ha doesn't have a frame because it is made to interact with the room, but it's also made to hang alone on a wall or with very little other art around that. This is why a gallery usually is called the white cube, because you have these big empty white walls and then some artworks inside. Compare this to a classic gallery where you have these thick frames, really big frames around the images because usually they would hang a lot of images at the same wall and you wanted to keep the attention of the viewer inside of the painting and separate it from the other pictures around. So you made a huge wooden or gold frame around that so the person can actually enjoy just that image without interacting with the room. So completely different concept. And of course, we have some of that in our editing today. All right, let's go on here. Complete night situation. You can see how you can change the daylight situation. Here we have kind of a night situation. And that is also interesting. And in this case, I would say this is more of kind of a cinematic look. Very interesting, not as artistic, not as involved as the other ones that try to carve out different elements. When you compare to this one, it's more becoming a sculpture in that sense. The elements in the picture here, it looks more natural, looks more like what you would see at that day of time with your eyes. But the editing has created it more in this kind of 
early night or late afternoon kind of scene with this nice blue in the background. So also very interesting. Let's go to the next one here. And I think here we have some examples for black and white, three different examples. Again, strong vignette, very much center focused, strong contrast here. So this is kind of in a, in a way, a black and white version of what we have seen here. And you can see how intense and dramatic that is. And I brought in some black and white versions here because I wanted to show you that black and white is not just removing color. Black and white is a complete language, a complete universe of photography and photo editing on its own. So that is really important to understand that. And you will see that in the next pictures. When you look at this picture here, for example, completely different. It's also black and white, but the expression is very different. Look at this. So here, strong vignette, strong contrast, a little bit of sepia in here. You see, there's a little bit of taste to that black and white. And then here we have a very even black and white, maybe a little bit of a vignette on the outside. And we have also kind of a contrast to the background with these elements in the foreground being a little bit darker and the background being a little bit brighter. Now compare this to the next one, which is just a slight change, but you will see that the slight change still has a huge impact. Look at that. See when I change back and forward, how much of a difference it makes where you put your light and where you put your shadow in the editing of an image. So you can see here with this one, it's not bad, but because the backgrounds and the element in the foreground, our branch is the same kind of gray, is the same kind of brightness, is the same kind of medium values. They melt together. It's really hard to visually separate them. It doesn't stand out and you don't know where to look. So you can see from that that just removing the colors isn't the end of the story for a black and white picture. So with this one, you have a clear structure, you have a clear outline of these flowers of that branch in the foreground separating from the background. And even the blur, even though the blur has not been changed, feels a lot more intensive here and more expressive and more part of the storytelling than you have it here, where just everything is mushed together and it's just, it doesn't tell you anything. It's just there, but it doesn't really give you too much of an image. Well, here you can really sink your eyes into that and really enjoy these different shapes, how they hang down, how they have been formed by nature. So it's really cool, right? I hope you experiment with that. And by the way, as a last point, I will also want to say that it is good to have different kinds of software to do this editing. When you have, for example, Nick collection, you have a ton of different presets and experimenting with these different styles, black and white and vintage and color and all these kind of things is very easy because it has presets, it has specialized effects that create these effects here. So it makes it a lot quicker. So think about maybe adding something when you like to experiment in that way to your software toolbox to experiment with that. Let me know, please, in the comment if you enjoyed this video, if you want to have more content like this, because I really enjoyed making that video for you. Leave a like and maybe subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you get notified about my next video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.